This conference will now be recorded. Well, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to week two of our uh, CISA book club. Um, I trust uh, everybody's uh, moved along on their reading. Um, uh, if not, uh, you don't really have to assess up to that right now. I think we've got a few more people uh, on the call um, from last week that are new that this is going to be their week one. So we're going to um, rehash a little bit about the overview, but we'll try to do that pretty quickly. And then we'll uh, eventually get into some practice test questions here. So without further ado, we will uh, go ahead and um, get into that. Um, do we have, uh, is there anybody on the call that was uh, not here last week that was here this week? Uh, Sean, are you on the call? I think I need that sound effect again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Please, please this is Gene. On call last week. Yeah, Gene too. Okay. Uh, Sean, uh, Sean sent me a note and said he was going to take take the day off if he could. So he's he's uh, likely not going to join and listen to the recording later. Okay, sounds good. Um, hey, Greg. So, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Boyd's on the call this week. Okay. Um, so, uh, welcome everybody. Um, the big uh, theme from last week was really to just, you know, kind of the first order of business as far as I was concerned, and kind of my number one recommendation was just to get signed up for the test. Um, one, primarily just to, you know, you kind of set that uh, goal line in sight, and then that I think will help motivate you to kind of get going um, with the rest of the stuff behind us with the reading and everything. Um, and also, uh, the uh, test format will be changing slightly in June. So um, from what has been published so far, there's been some, uh, a little bit of a shift in the percentage weighting between the different uh, domains. Um, what that, you know, that by itself doesn't look super, like a super huge change, but I don't know if they're gonna do any other test changes if we find out anything more on that, um, we'll let you know. But uh, just to kind of avoid that completely, um, if you get signed up and take that test before June, you won't have to worry about what may or may not be changing on that test. Um, so uh, as we know, there's gonna be you know a lot of reading from the Peter Gregory book. Um, uh, when you're going through the Peter Gregory book and also when you're going through the ISACA uh, test practice test questions, especially in the ISACA practice test questions book, um, you will occasionally run across a term that you say, I have not seen that term before. And then you go look in the index of the um, Peter Gregory book, and it's not in that book at all. And I did run into that a couple times. So what you want to do is, I mean, you'll need to, you know, basically go out and Google or look for other uh, resources to, to look up those specific terms. So it, you won't be a deer in the headlights on the test without, you know, not seeing one of the terms at all beforehand. And um, if you have not bought your books already, um, we had mentioned this kind of out loud, but it, it didn't make it onto the slide. There's a second location to get that um, ISACA book, and that's directly from the ISACA bookstore. And if you sign up for the um, ISACA membership, they actually give you a discount of the book. I think it's like a, about 150 bucks if you don't have the um, membership, but it's $120 um, if you do have the ISACA membership. And also with the ISACA membership, there's a greatly discounted test fee. So it sounds like getting that ISACA membership is still the way to go. Um, also, um, once everyone passes the test, which I know you will, um, the CPE requirements, um, for those of you who already have their CISST, the CPE requirements are basically the same thing. So that's good because there's not gonna be a whole lot of additional uh, care and feeding um, to maintain your CISA on top of your CISSP. So they're both 120 uh, CPE units over a three year period with a minimum of 20 in any given year. So that should be good news. And then um, as Sherry mentioned, um, you know, upcoming, we would love to have other folks kind of participate in this um, as guest speakers if you would like to share your uh, various experiences within uh, related to these various domains, that would be awesome. Hey, uh, Clark, I'll, I'll chime in a little bit with a little bit of housekeeping. Um, so um, 
uh, the, the way uh, I, um, the way we're gonna we'll share these recordings is they'll be posted on um, on our uh, blog uh, site, and I'll try to send out the link as soon as they're posted. And last week, the, our our marketing folks uh, who were kind of in charge of that blog site turned around the slides and the recording very quickly, and I was able to get the link out um, by the end of the day on Friday. And I also posted it on the Slack channel. Um, all of you should have received an invite either uh, from uh, internally uh, for online folks received an invite from me to join the Slack channel. And for folks that are external to online, you would have received an invite from our help desk. And um, so if you, uh, uh, external folks, if you uh, have not received your invite from help desk, first check your spam filter uh, to make sure it didn't go in there. And if you still did not receive it and would like to be uh, 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 part of the Slack channel, please let me know and I'll make sure uh, we get another invite out to you. Thanks, Jerry. Um, another word on those uh, books, um, on the uh, Peter Gregory book, um, that will come with a CD within it. And that CD has got a copy of the ebook, which you can save on your computer's hard drive so you can look at it on an airplane. And it's also got a little test engine on there, which is very helpful. And um, I believe the test engine on that one, you can also uh, divide it by domain. So you can just target, you know, as, as we're going through this, you can read a chapter and then um, break out that uh, Peter Gregory test engine and just test yourself on that um, individual domain. Um, in addition to looking through the uh, ISACA practice test book, practice questions book. I just, oops, sorry about that. All righty, sorry about that. Okay, on to the next slide. So this is the book, same schedule uh, from last week, uh, just to show where we're at. We're on week two, obviously. The first one was really more of a, just a high level overview of everything. Um, the second one, we're gonna get into the actual uh, material. Um, first part of the uh, um, second domain, IT governance and management. And here's the page assignments on that. The um, uh, pages uh, 19 through 77, um, there will be kind of chapter alignments, which will kind of align with some of the next slides that are coming up. And here's the uh, uh, more kind of motivation to get the test, to get signed up for that test before June. Um, this just shows that uh, um, slightly changing percentages, as we mentioned before. But beyond that, we don't really know what else might be changing. And here's just another, uh, we saw this slide last week too, but um, just kind of pointing out the specifics of the test, how long it is. And first assignment, um, I don't know, uh, I'm gonna assume everybody looked at it or tried to look at it. I know that the material is not, you know, not super a super page turner. But then again, I think a lot of that material in here isn't won't be completely foreign to everyone who's uh, been in the infosec world or have already have their um, uh, CISSP under their belt. And these two next two slides, basically, um, if you look at the Peter Gregory book, these are basically the uh, Clark. Yeah. Sorry, Nina. Can you go back a slide, please? So as, as we looked at, uh, and, and from our, our first uh, book club meeting, we have you know 19 to 77 or so uh, that we're supposed to look for. And then over the first two weeks, it talks about covering 73 to 157. Uh, on that 73 to 157 in the ma review manual, how do you recommend that we read through that? Uh, after we do the CISA guide and go over to that, or at the same time, what's your good strategy there? Yeah, good question, because the way, I mean, that uh, 
I believe in that uh, practice, the Isaka book, it's just kind of all lumped together in one giant domain. It's not really kind of broken down exactly in alignment with the Peter Gregory book. So um, it, yeah, you might want to go through it. Um, you know, you want to, I guess you can't, I guess what I'm trying to say is you can't really pick and choose the ones that are specifically relevant to the pages in the Peter Gregory book because it's just all kind of lumped together. So um, if you've got time, I would just kind of look at the whole thing. And quite frankly, when I was going through that uh, Isaka book, the pages did go pretty quickly in that thing, um, as opposed to the Peter Gregory book, just because the, it's just, that book is just, all it is is pure questions. Right. right. Hey. You want, go ahead, Jerry. Oh, uh, Clark, uh, Paul had a question about um, the, uh, on the previous slide, there's a reference to pages one through 72, and he was just wondering, uh, wanted clarity on that. Uh, one through 72. I'm not sure I see what you're talking about here. Um, hey, hey, this is Paul. Go back a couple slides to you had a pre you had another table and it under review manual pages it said one to seventy two. I think yeah that one. I think that's a typo, isn't it? Because one to seventy two is domain one, not domain two. Um, On the rightmost column in the first two cells, I yeah, think that, you have those numbers that, that, backwards. That, that, correct. All right, we might we might need to update the page numbers on that. But the good news is the um, kind of the domain, you know, it's basically broken up by the same domain format, which is you know dictated by Asaka between those two books. We'll make a note of that. Thank you for bringing that up. Actually, I'm looking at the book. I'm wondering if they have this done differently because I'm seeing pages one through at least 72 being a domain one. So yeah, we'll look at that. This is, that's strange. Thank you for calling that out. All right, so again, this is uh, just basically a um, highlight of the uh, table of contents that you'll see in the Peter Gregory book, the stuff that we're covering for the reading materials, for the reading materials for these pages. And um, as you're going through this, um, what kind of jumped out at me as someone who took the test already, and uh, to be quite frankly, I mean, after I took the test, I did not look in the rear view mirror much after taking it. Um, so um, <laughs> some of the stuff that seems like I'm looking at for the first time again. But um, definitely there's, uh, you run into a lot of, you know, it's very likely you're going to run into a lot of questions uh, related to um, steering committee stuff. And there's some definitely some subtle nuances that uh, ISACA is really chasing after to make sure that you understand those. Um, and you'll see that in the practice questions because there will be several questions and you'll think, um, wow, I, didn't they already ask that question? But there's, you know, that's where it comes into where you have to really read the questions carefully and um, really understand the difference between what they're looking for. But definitely you're, you're going to see some stuff on um, steering committee. You're going to see some stuff on balance uh, scorecard, um, government, governance. Um, this stuff down here, the stuff that policy procedures and standards, from a testing standpoint, I didn't think that was uh, terribly unique or difficult, but I actually thought there was just some good material in there from a policy standpoint that will kind of come in handy for um, any of the assessments you do upcoming. And this is basically a continuation of that. Um, you're going to definitely see some stuff uh, as it relates to, um, you know, risk management and the different things related to that. And then um, next we've got some uh, uh, actual discussion questions that I've got from the a couple uh, different resources. I intentionally took questions out of uh, things other than the Peter Gregory or the Isaka book just so they wouldn't be spoilers so you wouldn't have seen these already. And anybody have any questions up till now? If not, so we will jump into this. So um, this question, um, we thought 
this kind of seems like you'll see a, a very similar question no matter which domain you're in. Um, it really has to do with kind of what actions an auditor takes when they're when they've got kind of a fine. Um, and as you can see, this um, we'll kind of talk through each one of these uh, answers here. But um, an IIS auditor performing a review of application controls discovered a weakness in a software system which could materially impact the application. The IIS auditor should um, a disregard these control weaknesses as a system software review is beyond the scope of this. Sorry, this Disregard these control weaknesses as a system software review is beyond the scope of this review. So, I mean, basically, he's, you know, the gist of that one is you're sweeping under the carpet, so we know that's not the right answer. Um, B, conduct a detailed uh, system software review and control the, and report the control weaknesses. That sounds like a possibility. Um, include the report in a statement that the audit was limited to a review of the application controls. Um, again, that was not super bad. Review the system software relevance and recommend a detailed uh, system software review. So that one sounds pretty good too. And again, kind of the big thing here is you, there will often be more than one right answer to these questions. Uh, so you need to make sure you read all four. So in other words, if you are reading this and A sounds real good, you shouldn't just immediately say, okay, A is the answer. You should definitely read all four of them just because there's, you know, oftentimes two right ones. You need to just make sure you choose the best one. So in this case, um, the uh, explanation is D, um, and this particular uh, resource where I, where I got this test question was good because they give you a, a detailed question or detailed uh, response on why that answer is correct. Um, some of those uh, uh, resources that we have uh, linked to in, a, in a, another slide here, um, they don't. They'll just kind of say the answer is A, the answer is B, which are kind of good just because you can. Um, get through them quickly, but not so good because it doesn't give you a good explanation of why something is right. Everybody gets the gist of that one, right? Yeah, Clark, on number D, uh, where they talk about the system software controls as uh, relevant, I wasn't sure, is that relevant to the assessment? Is that relevant to they should be included in scope? I wasn't quite sure what was meant here on relevant. Um, well, it's, uh, they're very, in that first part of that answer, they're saying it's just because it's outside of the scope doesn't mean it should be ignored. So I think that probably answers the question, right? Okay, so just uh, software controls are relevant in general across the whole thing. And okay, yeah, I would, thank you. I, I would, I would uh, make the analogy on that one that that's basically kind of an AFR type thing. Oh, okay, yeah, that makes good sense. Thank you. And um, this one, um, I included this one because um, uh, the answer that we're going to see here in a minute might not be that obvious when you kind of look it up. But um, again, you're, you're definitely going to see some stuff related to the balance scorecard. Um, and the IT balance scorecard is a business government tool intended to monitor IT performance evaluation indicators other than. So which one of these does not include, is not part of the balance scorecard? And so it's giving you the choices of financial results, customer satisfaction, internal process efficiency, and innovation capacity. And as we jump down in here to the answer, the answer was A. But as we, um, off to the side there, I've got the, the reference of where that uh, test question is coming from. But also this little part right here is basically a, a clip from the Peter Gregory book. Um, and what I did basically is, you know, had the ebook up and did a search for the um, balance scorecard. And then basically this shows up on page 22. And what I think on this one, what's not super obvious is um, on the previous slide, let me jump up here. Um, it's basically saying other than, and it's saying financial results. But then when you look in the, the Peter Gregory book, it's got uh, key financial items measured include the cost of strategic initiatives, support costs of key applications and capital investments. I think the key difference here on this, what they're after, and this is just, you know, my interpretation, I'm no expert on this at all, but um, I think what they're saying here is kind of the before on the financial, whereas on the question up here, 
it's basically saying the result is the after on the financial. So I think that's really the, the distinction that uh, ISACA is after on this question. So that's kind of a indication of uh, what you really need to be careful for on some of these questions is how things are worded. So that uh, on that previous answer, um, result is kind of the, the key uh, differ differentiation here. And as we kind of look at the rest of them, um, sorry to be spending so much time in this one question here, but um, as we look at the rest of them, these things are basically laid out in a very similar um, choice structure to what shows up in the Peter Gregory book, even though they come from different resources. So, you know, we've got innovation, um, internal process, customer, and financial, but the big difference was that results versus the kind of the cost of the beforehand. And that was on page 22. Oh, okay, I guess it says right there. So. Any questions on that one? Okay, moving on. Um, this one is, uh, I, I actually thought this one was kind of a more difficult question. Um, the IT steering committee's role, and you're going to see some stuff on steering committee. The IT steering committee's role in the IT planning process is to a do document meeting notes, approve expenditure of the funds, conduct meetings regularly, and approve meeting notes. And I, um, the answer um, is B, which is uh, to approve expenditure of the funds. But if you look in the Peter Gregory book, and I actually highlighted this too, when you look up steering committee, um, there's actually something in there that says the steering committee needs to meet regularly to consider strategic issues. So that, you know, if you're looking at just that, you think, okay, the answer could be C too. So that's a good example of uh, something where there could be more than one uh, right answer. So make sure you kind of understand that whole steering committee thing uh, as much as you can because you'll definitely see questions on it. And that's from page 26 of the Peter Gregory book right there. Any questions on that? Um, kind of uh, related to that, you're also going to see questions. I don't think we've got any samples here for today, but um, you're going to see questions about, you know, what gets approved by the steering committee versus what gets approved by the board of directors. Um, so that you need to understand a distinction on as well. Next one, um, the foundation of IT governments is simply uh, risk management, alignment of IT and business, uh, alignment of IT and shareholder expectations, results of ex executive strategy sessions. Um, one thing you're going to see a lot of in the book is how you need to make sure that uh, business is aligned with um, uh, governance and infosec. And I think you're going to see that across several domains. And so that one, uh, this particular resource didn't tell you A, B, or C, and D. It just kind of shows you the answer here. But going back, um, you know, while all these things are kind of important, um, the, the foundational reasoning for IT governance to make sure that you know, a lot of times the way this question will read too is you'll see this question in a different format and um, instead of business it will just say uh, uh, company strategy uh, which is going to be kind of the same thing so look out for that I think there were there was more than one example of that as well yep you Clark this is great again um, this is uh, really helpful for me to understand how they're approaching this, like what we were talking about with the steering committee, starting on page, uh, the, actually the steering committee jumps in on uh, 25, and it doesn't say anywhere in there about expenditures. And right. so it, and, and so I'm trying to figure out where we would possibly capture that and, and this type of information that uh, it, it yeah, is, that, that seems somewhat contradictory. Yeah, that's what I kind of mentioned earlier too about um, I would run into things within the um, the uh, book 
uh, the I'm sorry, the Osaka practice test book, and there will be a question there where there will be a term that I hadn't even seen before, and I would look in the, um, you know, search the Peter Gregory book, and it wasn't in there at all. So that's where you really need to rely on other outside resources. So, you know, obviously Google's going to be your friend, um, and when you start looking at that stuff, sometimes there's, you know information overload and too much and it's like you really need to worry about what uh isaka wants this you know for this thing but um okay yeah you're right there are some uh i would say you know five to ten percent of the stuff you're going to run into you're going to you know be a little bit polluted by your own experience you know, you, you know your own bad experiences too it's like well that's not what i've seen out in the field but you know we really need to worry about what isaka wants for this on this question and um yeah so um if all you have to worry about is you know only missing 10 percent of the things you're gonna pass with flying colors but yeah, right. you, you okay. yeah you, that's a good point too <laughs> yeah. definitely you're going to need to uh um you know supplement the reading with um you know running down answers or more information on specific questions and terms okay so i didn't mean to derail i just was a little confused there Thank you. No, that was good. That was good. Next one. Um, when an organization defines job responsibilities as the goal of reducing potential damage from the actions of any one person, this is known as, and this should be um, pretty uh, um, familiar to a lot of people who have been through uh, CISSP or any other, you know, kind of standard infosec stuff and best practices. Which of course is segregation duties. This uh, um, audit script website, which is where this test came from, um, it's that one's good too because you can really uh, choose it by subject, and I think it gives you a little drop down on in terms of um, you know what the subject of the question is, so you can kind of target specific areas, which is good. That one should that one should represent one of the the guineas on the um, test for you. Here is uh, one that um, again um, there's going to be a lot of uh, questions regarding um, you know who's responsible for what and a lot of this stuff the the group names you know the nuances you really need to understand the nuances uh between what isaka wants in these um when you're talking about information security governance is responsible which group um as, and as you're looking through these things um you know you could probably toss out the external auditing thing right away even though they might le like leverage that ultimately the responsibility for governance is never going to be an outside party you know regardless of how much stuff gets outsourced you know, somebody on the inside still needs to answer for things. And so that's really kind of why they're throwing that kind of uh, choice in there for you. Um, and then um, as you're looking at this, um, I hope I'm guessing the answer right on this, but I'm going to think it's ex executive management. And this one doesn't really even come out and say executive management, but it's basically saying, you know, and you, you saw a lot of this in the CISSP exam, you know, where does the buck stop? And even within the PCI world, I mean, there's newer things within the PCI world, um, requirements related to, uh, you know, the uh, PCI charter and making sure somebody's um, accountable because in the past, you know, the exec, you know, there would be some big breach or something like that. And I think the, um, the executive leadership would try to shield themselves with, you know, lower echelon people. Um, but, you know, definitely the trend within the industry is to make sure that, uh, you know, the buck stops with that upper management. And you'll see a lot of that on the test too. Um, which of the following best describes a threat? 
and harmful circumstances of surrounding information resources, characteristics of information that can be exploited, inaccurate classification of information resources, um, information resources with poor passwords. So on this one, um, kind of going along this one, I think I remember seeing questions related to, you know, making sure you understand the, the difference between the threat and the vulnerability. Um, uh, you know, a threat kind of goes against the vulnerability, basically. So this one should not be difficult, but you need to make sure you understand the differences between those uh, various terms. Yeah, we're going through this pretty quick here. Um, so the answer is A on that, and then going back, let's talk about why the other ones might not be right. So. Um, characteristics of information resources that can be exploited. Um, that smells like the definition of a vulnerability to me. Um, inaccurate classification of information resources. Um, that would be, uh, again, kind of an internal thing and not really an outside threat. Um, information with uh, information resources with poor passwords. That also would be, um, I think, fall into the vulnerability camp. So. The first one is different from the last three in terms of, you know, what the threat versus what the vulnerability is what I believe they're after on this question. So um, this one, um, what's important about this question is you need to really understand the various roles. Um, you'll see that's kind of a recurring theme here. Um, what roles do what? Um, and don't, you know, get yourself too polluted over, you know, a role that you may have once had where, you know, you're wearing more than one hat kind of a thing. But um, here they're basically saying, you know, what's the, you know, what's kind of a potential for collusion here? Um, so when you're uh, combining an end user with another duty, whether it's security administrator, network administrator, control group, or data entry. So when, as we're looking through these different uh, answer choices, um, end user and data entry, probably there's not a big, uh, big gap in difference there. Um, control group, um, that really isn't so much of a, uh, a duty, I wouldn't think. Um, and so, so I think the two best choices on here would come down to uh, security administrator and network administrator. And security administrator would be kind of more of a uh, um, kind of a, a, a step back or an independent department, um, or at least it should be. Um, and then you kind of are left with network administrator, where they're the ones that are going to be, you know, actually making changes that could affect security. And so here's the answer from audit scripts. Um, Organizational role of the end user should not be combined with the role of network administrator as a combination of job responsibilities may create a potential control weakness. ISACA has provided a very helpful segregation of duties control matrix that the CISA candidate should be familiar with prior to taking the CISA exam. Any questions on that one? And um, this one, I probably should have uh, put it right next to that earlier question because it was um, kind of similar. Um, but which of the following is not found in a standard IT uh, balance scorecard? Investment strategies, missions, or measures? And um, so what was a little bit different difficult about this question was, I mean, it's basically talking about investment, whereas um, that previous question uh, related to the balanced IT, IT scorecard when they talked about financial results, they showed that is kind of the wrong answer or the one that was included. But this one, um, investment, is kind of in a little bit of conflict with that, that previous question, if you remember. So I think this is a good example of something that, you know, I alluded to and Greg alluded to about things that are a little bit uh, confusing and a little bit um, uh, contradictory. So 
So kind of something to watch out for here. And we're kind of running through this pretty quick here. Um, which of the following describes the IT government's focus area called performance management, um, managing knowledge and infrastructure, completing projects, and translating strategic, translating strategic into action items, understanding the enterprise's tolerance for risk, and adjusting and aligning IT operations with the enterprise's operations. Anyone want to take a stab at that one? Bueller, Bueller, I guess not. <laughs> I'm still reading. Oh, oh, sorry. You want to take a stab at that one, Greg? Oh, I was going to go with uh, completing projects, translating. Um, I would have gone with uh, adjusting and aligning IT operation with the enterprise's operation, but it, it seems less around enterprise operations, more around IT governance. So um, what they're after here is performance management, and then I think uh, since we're talking about performance management, they need to basically be looking for uh, results is the way I kind of read that. So as we're looking at the answers, um, managing knowledge and infrastructure, um, that sounds more kind of uh, high level. And then this third one, understanding the enterprise's tolerance for risk, um, that does not seem like it's so much related to performance management either, excuse me. So the second and fourth choices, um, we kind of come down to it looks like so another good example of um, uh, two questions, two answers that, you know, neither one of them would be, you know, blatantly wrong. And let's see which one they like here. So completing transactions. I'm sorry, completing projects and translating strategic into action items. Um, so performance measurement is one of the IT government governance focus areas outlined in COVID, uh, performance management, strategic man resource management, value delivery, risk management, and strategic alignment. Um, I remember, and I'm just kind of recalling this right this moment here, but I remember somewhere in the Peter Gregory book, and I think it was related to the COVID stuff, where it kind of gives you the outline of all the COVID stuff, but it, it kind of more or less says you really don't need to know those in great detail. Um, but this kind of maybe from a high level standpoint, so going back to the original question here, um, so when they're talking about performance management, it looks like they're really talking about you know uh, um, measuring things and taking action. Um, so this fourth one, adjusting and aligning IT operations within the, so that doesn't look like it's um, related as much to results as this one. So that's why they're going with this one as the better answer, I believe. And then um, I don't know if any, does anybody have any questions on the questions? Some can you go those, back one slide? Can you can you go back one slide if you don't mind? Yeah. So there it has the uh, it looks like at least when I see it looks like they had the third you know C as a check you know as the right answer. Is that correct or? Because I agree that it's you know I think it is that performance management, well, but then. But then when you go to this next slide, it looks like they have C, you know, as the dot, right? And it's not B. Oh, 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 oh. That, there's an explanation for that. Um, okay. So, yeah, you can see um, uh, as we – this uh, site – this is actually another uh, – thank you for bringing that up, by the way. Um, this is kind of another good uh, uh, feature of this site. If you look at the same question twice, um, it will shift the answers around. So that answer was that one, but 
just when I did the print screen of it, it shifted them around. No, I, I promise you, I promise you, I'm not lying here. Um, <laughs> So every time you go into it, that'll shift that around. That kind of drove me nuts because when it when I was making the print screenshots, it would cover it up. And um, but after kind of going through that a couple times and getting these uh, screen grabs, I thought you know that's probably a good thing because if you go through it more than once, you just won't automatically be uh, have your thinking process kind of polluted or pre-populated with, with what the answer is. You really kind of you know got to know it. Good catch. You passed the. You passed. <laughs> um, so some of this uh, is a repeat from last week. Um, so these, uh, you know, what I would do with these, uh, um, once you uh, pull up the uh, PowerPoint thing on your end, you'll probably want to save all these things to your favorites. And I've added these two new ones. Um, the audit scripts is one that we've got a few questions from today. Um, and these bottom two, to see, uh, I hadn't seen these before when I took it, um, but this one, both of these let you uh, target specific domains, which is good. Some of these other ones didn't really let you choose the domain. So as, as you're going through this domain by domain, as we're kind of going through this week by week, it might be a little bit more difficult too because you can't really uh, sequester the questions out related to a specific domain, but these bottom two you definitely can. So recommendation is you, you get all these copied to your um, uh, favorites and then, um, you know, use these along with the uh, Isaka book as well. Um, by a show of hands, I know that uh, Greg has already done this. Um, has most of you, any of you, anybody else um, scheduled their exam yet? Hey, this is Paul. I scheduled my exam. Okay, awesome. For That's early perfect. April. Hey, I had two questions for you. Um, how long, do you know how long it usually takes for them to send you the exam results? And do you know yeah, how long it typically takes for them to respond to your uh, certification application? Yeah, um, when you sit for the test at the very end of it, you know, you basically kind of got to pull the trigger and say you're done. And then a little screen pops up and um, it's a little bit uh, kind of a uh, little bit nerve wracking because when that screen pops up, there's a bunch of red on it. And in real small, in a real small font, it will basically tell you you passed. Um, and you don't really see that right away. So the initial, <laughs> your initial reaction when you see that screen and you see a bunch of red is like, uh-oh, this, this doesn't look good. But um, you w will have passed. The bad news is they will not let you, uh, there's nothing you can print out. They're, they won't let you take a picture of the screen with your phone. So you basically walk out of there with no proof whatsoever. And then about 10 days later, you'll get an email and that email will be in the format of something to the effect of uh, you have gotten a preliminary pass. And you know that's kind of a little bit nerve wracking too. Preliminary, what does that mean? They can, they can pull back on me, they're gonna like, Put me against the bell curve or something like that, and find that I, you know, fell on the wrong side of it this time out. But um, that's what I got. And then um, once you get that, then you fill out your application. And the application, um, the good thing about the application is that little form on the Isaka website is really simple. Um, you just basically uh, put in your information, and then um, there's some experience check boxes, and then I think you had to put in a name of somebody who could potentially vouch for you in case they wanted to audit you. Um, I did not get audited um, on mine. Um, and it took about 10 days, I believe. Um, uh, no, it didn't, I'm sorry, 10 days to get the email saying I passed the test. And then after I did the application, it was a few weeks before I got my um, uh, cert in the mail. But a few days before I got the cert in the mail, I got another email that actually included a PDF of the cert. So, um, but that, I mean, the difference between that email and the physical cert that you get in the mail that you can, you know, hang on the wall, um, that was only a few days, I believe. But it, it's definitely a few weeks after you get your, um, after you make your application. And there's a $50 application fee from what I recall. So I Thanks. think the total, the total, 
the total cost for everything, you'll have, you know, the cost of the books, the cost of the ISACA membership, which discounts the books and the exam, the exam fee, and then also the $50 um, uh, application fee. And I think that was pretty much it. Okay, thanks. Okay. And then our next assignment uh, for week two, um, as uh, Greg was mentioning before, um, you can't really divide that uh, um, ISACA book out between and completely align it with the Peter Gregory book. So that's kind of why we've got this covers both uh, uh, this week and week, actually this should say week three right here. Sorry about that. Um, so we've got those additional pages. Um, Schedule your exam for those who haven't. Um, again, I, you know, for those who are new this week, when I scheduled my exam, the uh, testing center that was closest to me was not very big. I think it only had about 20 seats, but they were just a generic testing center. They did things for all kinds of industries. And um, when I first looked at the scheduling for that, it was fairly booked up, and I wanted to do it for a Saturday. And I had to, it was, I had to schedule my test pretty far out there. And since June is not, you know, that far away, I mean, it seems like we just had New Year's and we're already kind of looking at February almost now. So June really is not that far away. So um, I would uh, get that test scheduled sooner rather than later. Again, one, there might be a uh, scheduling conflict with the test center of your choice. And two, it, you know, sets that uh, goal, goal line for you. Hey, uh, just... FYI, the domain is incorrect in your table there. It's domain two, right? Uh, it's chapter one, domain two. You got them okay. those numbers backwards. <clears throat> yeah, we put all these things in there wrong for profiling purposes, and you pass it test. <laughs> all right, we will fix that too. Any other questions? Since this is our uh, first um, kind of, I mean, we had our introductory meeting last week, and then this week we kind of really went through some questions and kind of some more meat and potatoes. Um, as far as the format of the way we did things today, would you guys rather see something else that we focus on? Is the questions that we uh, looked at, um, is that kind of the way we want to do these? Do we want to do more questions? Do we just want to make it pure questions? Um, what are your guys' thoughts? I, I like the format. I, I I was unclear if for some of those questions, if you chose them as examples because they were so tricky. Maybe if you can clarify for when you review the questions, if these you should absolutely know. If you don't, if you can't answer this question, you know, it's forget about it. Or this is a tricky question that I'm pulling up as an example of things to watch out for. <clears throat> Uh, I guess the answer to all that is yes. Um, there were some questions on there that I thought they were difficult. And um, from my own testing experience, the domain that we're starting off with is the hardest one. There's some stuff kind of later on that, because uh, my uh, my background was really in operations. So there's kind of some stuff in later chapters that you get more into operations that I thought were pretty easy. Um, and this chapter for me was the hardest one because there's kind of some, a lot of nuanced stuff. And, you know, as you, uh, meet with clients and you see people in different roles, you see some of the stuff doesn't really align with the ISACA definitions. So, um, yes, um, you want to, I mean, kind of the, the focus here was to really make sure you understand the nuances between, um, you know, steering committees and, and different roles that, you know, ISACA wants, not necessarily what you've experienced in your own, uh, on, your, on, the, on your own travels. So um, uh, I would say that the questions we chose were probably a little bit more difficult than um, were chosen for, you know, their difficulty. I mean, there was that one in there about separation duties, which I, which I think should be a gimme for everybody. But um, as you look through the uh, ISACA book and you go through those questions, I thought in general 
those questions in the Asaka book were harder than ones you would see on the test. So if you're comfortable with the Isaka book questions, you will do well on the test. But you know, with anything, practice makes perfect. And as you go through uh, practice question after practice question, and you start seeing some similarities between you know uh, what they're looking for between steering committees and balance scorecards and roles, um, you'll kind of see, okay, this is what this is what Isaka is after on these things. But thank you, good question. Any, anyone else have any uh, comments about the format and the, how we want to continue this? I like the format. Um, what we may do, just so you don't have to do all the talking, Clark, is uh, occasionally we'll look for some guest speakers to at least uh, fill in, you know, if they have uh, industry experience about any of the, the, uh, the subject matter for any particular week. We'll, See if we can get some people to to be some of our uh, to make cameo appearances. So that's the only thing okay. that we jump as we move forward. Yeah, I think we. Uh, I think uh, I, don't, I don't. I don't know if uh, Jeff Mann knows about this, but um, I know that Jerry has his crosshairs on him to help us in a on a later chapter. <laughs> Anybody else? If, if uh, anything comes up where you think, oh, maybe we should include this, uh, go ahead and um, shoot uh, uh, Sherry, Jerry, or I um, an email or post it to the uh, Seat the Book Club Slack channel, and we will uh, try to incorporate that in our future book club sessions. And if there is, are no other questions, um, we can give you back five minutes of your life. And thank you for everybody attending. And um, we'll get this uh, um, uh, slide deck posted up um, hopefully later today or by early next week at the latest. Right. As soon as uh, the recording uh, compiles, it takes a it takes it a few minutes to to compile. I'll, I'll uh, make it available to our marketing folks. And Clark, if you could ship me the final version of the slides, I'll include that when I ship it over. Okay. Sounds good. Great. Thanks, everybody. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.